Hi, I'm Tana Page, author of Promoting Health and Emotional Well-Being in Your Classroom. I'm excited to show you a couple of things you can do to make teaching health a lot easier for your students who are preparing to be in the classroom. Things that we've learned over the last 20 years of teaching. This first slide shows you the common, 10 common areas of health education, things that you'd find in most textbooks. This long list can make teaching health seem overwhelming, especially for elementary school teachers. And it makes, it makes them feel like they don't have time to teach health. Junior high and senior high teachers also feel like they don't have enough time to teach all of these things. So now I want to show you how you can make it easier and make it a way in which they're teaching health effectively in just four or five units. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have identified these six risk behaviors as the most important things we need to be focusing on. Unhealthy dietary patterns, physical inactivity, behaviors that contribute to unintentioned pregnancies and STDs, tobacco use, alcohol and other drug use, and behaviors that contribute to unintentional injuries and violence. These six areas can easily be grouped into just four. Healthy eating and physical activity naturally go together. Tobacco, alcohol, and drugs also naturally go together. Here you can see how the grouped risk behaviors correlate with the 10 content areas. Here disease is colored to go with sex education, but it can also be taught with nutrition and drugs. So it can effectively be integrated into all of the four areas. This is also true of key consumer and community health issues, environmental health issues. What about mental health? Well, mental health is an important part of nutrition and physical activity, sexual activity as well, and an important part of violence prevention. So mental health needs to be included when addressing all of the risk behaviors. But it can also be an introductory unit of its own and then reinforced as it's discussed in the risk behaviors. So there you have it, health instruction in just four or five units, where teachers focus in on what is really important. Now let's look at how to include the National Health Education Standards. Here are the key standards words. The first standard deals with content, but the rest of them all address skills. Analyzing skills, accessing skills, communication skills decision-making skills, goal-setting skills, practice and behavior skills, and advocacy skills. Clearly, we must teach skills while addressing risk behaviors. These skills need to be integrated into the four or five units we've talked about. Now I want to show you how we've made this easy to do. The column on the right shows how our book integrates the national standards into each chapter. The blue type shows how every chapter emphasizes the national standard skills. The first two chapters are foundation chapters, dealing with how to make a difference in the classroom and how to effectively include unit and lesson plan preparation. The next three chapters, three, four, and five, are all skill-based chapters. They focus in depth on the national standard skills. These skill-based chapters precede the risk behavior chapters that follow, so students can first master teaching these skills and be better prepared to integrate them into the risk behavior chapters that follow. The skill chapters, 3, 4, and 5, also contain the content typically taught in mental and emotional health units. So if you're teaching that as an introductory unit, there you have it. Chapter 10 also contains emotional health content. Anyone teaching very long will have to deal with critical issues in the classroom, and this chapter serves as a great summarizing chapter as well as addressing these issues. Using this book and following its approach makes teaching health at any level easier, fun, and much more effective. The book also comes with lots of web ancillaries and has, that we've labored over to make your job much easier. They can save you lots of time and effort, so be sure to check them out. Thanks for tuning in, and I wish you the very best in all of your teaching preparations. Thank you, Tana, and thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions or would like more information on promoting health and emotional well-being in your classroom, please contact your account specialist at 800-832-0034 or info at jblearning.com.